Welcome, welcome to the Rick Elf's Real Estate Show. The Federal Reserve raised their rates by 0.50 today. What a shocker. <laughs> Bet you didn't see that coming. All kinds of interesting news whenever you see a move by the central banks. And the difference is now this time is they telegraph it so much more. So it's interesting how the reaction is when, uh, when they do what they say they're going to do. Because right now, look at this, the Dow jumps 900 points after Federal Reserve raises, hikes interest rates by half a percentage of point. Why would the Dow go up? Well, because they did what they said they were going to do. They were telegraphing what they were going to do. They're fighting inflation. Stock market likes that. Now, if he'd have come in today and said, we're going up 0.75 instead of 0.5, probably would have rattled everybody. But this Fed chairman is telegraphing every move he made. Now, Paul Volcker, I don't recall him doing that, but it doesn't mean that he didn't do that. It just means I was 27 years old at the time and there was no Internet. I just wanted to know who was going to be entertaining at the comedy club for the weekend. So I was not tuned in to what Paul Volcker said and how he was going to raise rates. But now the information's everywhere. So the market pretty much bakes the rate into the cake. I say that a lot. And so you, you sit and wonder, well, what's going to happen to rates after they make this announcement? <clears throat> They went up a little, maybe from 5.53 to 5.57 today. That's a little, little, tiny little move because they already anticipated he was going to do this. Now they're saying in June they're going to be backing off. They're going to be selling treasuries and they're going to be backing off and getting up, unloading trillions in mortgage-backed securities. That'll start affecting rates as well. The other thing that he said that I think probably rattled people just a little bit, not much, is he made a statement and said, well, we'll keep raising rates as high as we have to until we fix this problem. Now, he said inflation has actually kind of come down, looking at their data, a little bit, but he said not long enough to call it a trend. Two months is not a trend. He said he's encouraged by the numbers he's seeing, but then he backed it up by saying, well, we'll just keep raising rates until uh, until we fix this. So where's it going to go? And nobody knows. Now, I showed this on a live stream I did. And this is historical view of interest rates. I'm going to roll this all the way back to 1980. For those of you that are, you know, my age, you get this. Um, this is what happened. You know, they kind of 17, 18% right up here fixed mortgage rate holy cow and then it kind of wobbled wobbled went down and gradually it's been going down since 1987 the nominal rate what's hurting people now is during this rundown in the interest rates despite uh if we look at 2008 let's see if i can find this that's 2006 here's the meltdown 2008 so right here uh, fixed mortgage rates were 6.35, then they came down to 5.07. This is where the problem was, was that most, there were so many people, the majority of them that bought houses, they weren't paying 6.35 or 7%. They were paying no interest or 1% on their loans that they had out there at the time. So they had uh, teaser payments and then the note came due. And so when you compare interest rates and they compare payments and they compare us back to 2007, be careful because they aren't really quoting the payments the people were actually paying. And now we've got sticker shock because the rates have gone up astronomically in a short period of time, the highest that they've gone up uh, than you've ever seen in this chart. Now, they, they went up back here in the 1980s right here pretty quick and we're... We're hitting that speed, so it's the highest we've been since the 80s when it comes to the acceleration. And that's what's getting everybody all wigged out. Now, <clears throat> it's safe to say the central bank put us in this situation, and we wouldn't be here. They wouldn't have to fix it if they hadn't broke it. But I'm no economist, so I don't know what this would look like or what the economy would look like if we didn't have any intervention after the collapse. Don't know. Don't really care because there's nothing I can do about it. I do remember um, the guy that was uh, uh, Jack Kemp. He was in charge of housing and urban development under President Reagan. 
And for some reason, I remember this quote. He said, if it wasn't for the government in housing, we wouldn't need the government in housing. In other words, he said, when you look at how much of these transactions from the time that tree is cut down to the time a house is built and it's sold and how much we collect in fees and regulation, we've driven the price of houses up so much that now we have to come in and offer government assistance. So he was trying to make the point that said, the only reason we're having to make offer government assistance because we stuck our nose in it too much in the past. So um, I kind of agree with that. But again, there's nothing I can do about it. So what's happening? Realtor.com has an article, how much higher can mortgage rates go? And they're going to try and make a guess here in this article. And keep in mind, they already said that we were going to be all the way up to 4.6% by the end of this year. So you got to take this with a grain of salt. Um, higher rates can tack hundreds of dollars on the monthly mortgage payments. I get that. So what they say here is I think price increases will top out. As demand goes down, costs will go down. Prices will go up 1% to 2% a year, closer to historical average, but won't fall because we're still way underbuilt. Mortgage broker Rocky Andrews of Lending Arizona in Tucson believes rates will crack 6% this year, probably in two weeks. He's seen rates rise rising to the mid five range already forcing many of his clients to look at cheaper homes or make lower offers. Other real estate experts believe it's unlikely that rates will go up that high this year, but certainly not impossible. I'm not one of those guys that think it's not going to hit 6%. Just for the record, I think it's going to be, uh, uh, it's going to, going to get there sooner rather than later. The inflation numbers are not looking good. They're tamping down a little bit. But it's unfortunate that in our monetary system that the only way that we can bring rates down is to slow things down. So we have to slow down the economy and we have to slow down real estate. And so it's going to come. I don't think there's going to be a crash, uh, but I am seeing inventory climbing. And it's climbing at a pretty good clip percentage wise. I mean, we're up 36 percent versus the same time last year. But again, you'll hear me say often 36% of a small number is still a small number. So it has a long way to go to get which what our normal is around 24,000 homes on the market. And that normal of 24,000 was before we've had our explosive population growth. So we might need close to 30,000 homes to call it a balanced market. Who knows? Uh, that's just another number we're going to watch. Now on my website, rickhelps.com, there's a tab on the right-hand side on the top here that says Federal Reserve Data. And you can go to that any time and look here and see what the CPI is, what the unemployment rate is, what 10-year treasuries are, real GDP, we're down minus 1.4, and uh, payroll unemployment. And you can click on this and you can see all kinds of data from the Federal Reserve. And you can do that by either going to Fred dot com, fred.stlouis.org, or just go to my website and click on that. On that tab it's on the upper right hand side and while you're there there's a mortgage calculator there's resources and all kinds of fun stuff on that website that I've provided for you and if you want a detailed report on what your house is worth and you can get a lot of them online you really can but we've got one that people that have asked for it so far say they love it because it goes into some real detail on what your neighbor's house sold for and everything that entails those sales and gives you a pretty good snapshot of what your home value may be because it's going to give you a range. Because remember, they haven't been in your kitchen. So a lot of these are just flyover data. And I did show the difference a few days ago. The difference between um, Redfin, Zillow, and Realtor.com was, you know, almost $60,000. So you know, try as they may, they're not going to get very close, but it is kind of nice to look at a report where you can actually see the houses that sold near you, what they went for, what they, uh, and when they closed. So if you want that, just send me an email, rick at rickhelps.com and just send me your address and include your city and state too, because if I just get your address, I did one the other day, I didn't know it was in Colorado. So, uh, but we can do, you know, other states as well. So, need any help with that, give me a holler. But hey, the Fed spoke today, the markets are reacting. It's kind of a snoozer day. Hope your day is going well. Take care. 